Welcome back, Nick and Lex here. Thank you so much for joining me to another episode of Music with Nick. Today, we got a marathon lined up. I'm super happy we're doing some Rick Wakeman. This is a video uh, sponsored by BMAC. Thank you, BMAC, for sponsoring the marathon and making the video happen. I appreciate it so much. Um, uh, and we are we just got a, a little dose of Rick Wakeman yesterday in um, the Yes reaction we did, the 22-minute one. Even though for some reason uh, I did read in the uh, comments that Rick Wakeman did not like the album at all. He called it like... Um, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he just like didn't like it at all. And he left the band after that recording, which is a shame because I mean, I even called him the wizard in that uh, particular video. It was just a great song. I did enjoy it very, very much. But I mean, you know, a musician like Rick Wakeman has, you know, just, you know, I, I understand people like Jordan Rudis or, you know, Derek Sherinian, uh, you know, when you're on that level and something goes wrong with the band or the musician uh, ship or the direction the band is going, there is sometimes a lot of, uh, you know, drama and people leave and, 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 and come again. And we've seen it all before with uh, people like Bruce Dickinson and Iron Maiden who left because of the direction the band was going. But he did come, he, he, he did. A return to the band so it's just like a thing that happens uh so okay but today we're gonna do just rick wakeman um uh we're gonna do uh we're gonna do anne of cleves uh, this is from his solo album the six wives of henry the eight um i hope i got that <laughs> roman numbers correct this time not like in the uh um the warning reaction uh, then we're going to do Merlin, the magician. This is by the, uh, also solo album, the myth and the legends of, of King Arthur and the Knights of the round table. Here we go. 1975. Let me see the first album. I didn't give you the year. 1973. I guess this must have been around the time when he left. Yes, maybe not. I could be wrong. And then we're going to do white rock. Uh, this is a soundtrack, White Rock or original motion picture from 1977. Really cool. I didn't even know that he did also like soundtracks and stuff like that, but very successful career. Um, like I mentioned on the marathon, Yes Marathon, when they told him, like, are there going to be any lyrics on your uh, album? He's like, no. Uh, yeah, then forget about it. And then sold 11 million copies so that's how just how easy it is for a musician to recognize you know their genius and they know what they're putting out into the world you know so um okay so we're gonna go with these three songs thank you again everyone for watching for being here all you yes fans this is gonna be um refreshing to just listen to some rick wakeman by himself and uh, if you like what you see, you can like the video, dislike the video, you can subscribe, whatever rocks your boat. Okay, so here we go with Anne of Cleves. And thanks again, BMAC, for the um, selection. Here we go. <laughs>
this entire song is going to be a solo, but I just wanted to figure out who was involved with this. And it's uh, super interesting that he, um, Bill Bruford is on the album. He's not playing drums. I just uh, saw that Alan White is actually playing the drums. And um, Chris uh, Squire is on this album, but he's not playing the bass. I can't figure out who's playing the bass on this track. Uh, I literally looked everywhere here on Wikipedia, but I see that Mike Egan is on the guitar, and but also Rick Wakeman pretty much plays everything, so he could be playing the bass on the with some other keyboard, but I'm, I, it just doesn't sound like it. But it's just like, man, he's going full blast. Like he is, I mean, a genius, man, and uh, I'm sure a huge inspiration to. Guys like, you know, keyboard players from all these other bands. I just don't, I don't want to name drop anything, but uh, yeah, great, crazy stuff. Really good. Really, really awesome. <laughs> just figured out finally i figured out who the bass player is dave wintour um uh, plays on this track the bass very cool bass and if you just like try and kind of like analyze like alan uh i'm sorry rick wakeman's style i mean it's it's heavily in the classical realm of like just scales you know and he does put in some like odd like um you know scales in there like you know ragtime and stuff just right now and some blues stuff when he when he solos but not a lot of jazz i, I just don't hear it i haven't or oh, maybe i haven't heard it in this particular track but he goes more with the linear you know linear scales which is totally fine by me i love i love classical music but i just like when i try to analyze what he's actually playing um it's more like classically inclined you know like melodic minor harmonic minor scales and stuff like that but really cool i mean pedal notes and all that crazy stuff you know i'm sure he's obviously inspired by classical you know composers and all that good stuff with also his genius 
So basically the man can play anything he wants, but I just, in this track, I hear more like a classical um, influence, which also of course goes with the name I'm not, you're not gonna play jazz scales in something that has to do with Henry VIII, no? So um, yeah, so let's go, uh, uh, let's go and continue with Rick, um, what a master, let's, let's continue. <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> here we go. This was Anne of uh, Cleves. What a crazy, lovely track. Um, I mean, I think also maybe he just wanted to go solo because he just, maybe he was just sick of, you know, of not being able to express himself, you know, because this is full on expression, you know, full on virtuoso talk here you know he's going full blast maybe he was just maybe he, he he felt he was being held back you know and it happens you know we saw it with so many guitar players who were in bands and then they just like went instrumental uh we see we saw it with steve Vai, we saw it with with ingwie momstein uh many just so many guitar players you know that that, that baby ba baby basically uh felt that okay, they're giving me like 30 seconds here to, you know, express me. I want to have like maybe five minutes to solo. So I totally get it, you know. So okay, we're gonna continue with Merlin, Merlin the Magician, and this is a uh, two years after this album. Um, uh, let's see who's on here. I want to see. It's always interesting when it comes to Yes and the members of Yes, who's on, who's playing actually. Um, this is from the myth. So this is all based on books, of course. Um, both of them. Wait. Oh, I mean, just by legend or tales. But the first one was based on a book I saw. Okay, so we're playing... Merlin the Magician. Wow, this is a very long album. Let's see who's on here. Barney James on the drums. Roger Newell on bass guitar. So nobody I recognize... Uh, on the musician, I mean, on the playing the music, but well, it's him pretty much doing everything. So here we go. <laughs>
scale. I mean, that's like some Chopin right there, you know. Beautiful.
just have to stop. I have to stop at least uh, a little bit. But um, I mean, much more aggressive here, the whole thing, much more chaotic, but in a beautiful way. And I mean, he uses all kinds of synth effects here. Really cool. I'm loving this. It's just more fantasy like like the whole like like the title you know it feels like you're in like in a different time in a different place it's very very cool what he achieves like with all this atrocity really really good <laughs> it's very trippy very trippy the the synthesizers um and the wheel the wheel the wheel i know how he does it and i wish you could see here i have like this keyboard and you can you can, it's like a little like pedal where you can like, and, um, but the way he does it is just ridiculously good and, and fast. And he's such, he has such a crazy technical command over the instrument, you know, it's like, wow. And, um, I did like the first one a little bit more, but this one is more adventurous. It just has a little bit more like fat, um, to it, you know? As you, if you want to say, but uh, really cool, loving it. I'm gonna re rewind a little bit here, and uh, let's continue. <laughs> For example, here at the end, you could hear a little bit more, um, you know, more of a motion picture approach. It almost sounded like could be like some kind of soundtrack by Disney or, you know, especially what he was playing more with a c comedic, you know, intention here. Really cool. Um, like, bram, bram, you know, it's like, um, but I mean... I've heard this, for example, in Symphony X when they really start like going full orchestra mode, but it's like not even an orchestra. It's all done on the keyboards. And um, this is what this was sounding like. But also like, you know, the cartoon music, like Tom and Jerry, very chaotic, hectic stuff. But it was always great, you know, um, watching those cartoons back, uh, you know, in the 80s. It was just so musically like... <laughs> very educational by watching all this chaos and violence like Tom and Jerry and stuff but this was very very interesting now we're going to do White Rock and this is actually from a original motion picture soundtrack um, not the longest one but um, let's go with White Rock and this is 77 uh, while I was listening I was also reading a little bit about his life and he's like a bit crazy and extreme like I mean having suffered three heart attacks. Um, wow. In his 20s. Like, who the hell gets a heart attack in their 20s? Uh, I guess, you know, rock rock and roll stars, you know? So, yeah. So, uh, but I'm happy he's doing well. Um, and uh, I hope he's taking care of himself. Because life is, you know, uh, very precious. Okay, here, let's go with White Rock. Thank you.
crazy. Crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, I love like the scales that he was using. I don't even know what he was doing. A lot of chromaticism and a lot of crazy stuff, but really, really cool. Um, uh, so I'm sure uh, you guys have heard of Jordan Rudis. Jordan Rudis is the uh, actual right now still and it has been since 1998, I think 1999, the uh, keyboard player from uh, Dream Theater. Um, I'm going to play a little piece by him. Um, now, he's also very uh, virtuoso like and. I, I hope I got the right one. Um, it's a short one, but um, it's a really cool one. And I just, since we're already doing like keyboard only, um, let me let me just give me one second and I'll find the one that I'm looking for. All right, I found it. It's just by Feeding the Wheel 2001. I remember hearing this back then, so I don't even really remember what it's like, I just remember it's very, very beautiful and has a lot of just amazing <laughs> stuff on there. So it's called Headspace. Here we go, Jordan Rudis. Um, here we go. Totally remember.
Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure Jordan Rudis listened to a lot of Rick Wakeman to get like into this kind of like playing. And, you know, it's also it just reminded me a little bit of Jordan. But hey, I hope you guys enjoyed Rick Wakeman marathon with a little send off by Jordan Rudis. Thank you, BMAC, for this amazing marathon. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed everybody who loves Yes and Rick Wakeman and the boys. Leave your comments in the description. Let me know what you loved. And uh, thank you. See you in the next video. Take care.